Hello, royal folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of royal news and analysis. But before we start, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon. Thanks. So now, in the midst of the holiday season, there were whispers in the royal corridors that Meghan and Harry were gearing up for a grand return to the bosom of the royal family. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. It turns out their plea for a family reunion fell flat on its face, leaving the dynamic duo labeled as the biggest losers in this royal game of thrones. The plot thickened with the release of Omid Scobie's latest drama-filled tome, Endgame, which spilled the beans on the private and secret correspondences between the Sussexes and the royal family. If Meghan and Harry thought this would be their ticket back into the royal fold, they were sorely mistaken. The book, filled with shocking details, only served to deepen the rift between the rebellious couple and the firm. As the world awaited a heartwarming Christmas reunion, it all came crashing down. King Charles and Prince William, wary of trusting Meghan and Harry after their relentless attacks on the royal family, rejected the couple's plea for reconciliation. It seems the wounds inflicted by the Sussexes' direct and indirect assaults on the firm are still fresh, leaving the royal family reluctant to extend an olive branch. Some royal experts have advised the couple to shift away from their narrative, cautioning that they only remain in the headlines for their continuous claims about the royal family. It's a piece of advice that seems to fall on deaf ears as Meghan and Harry continue to navigate the delicate line between seeking redemption and perpetuating their victimhood narrative. One intriguing perspective that has emerged suggests that Meghan may be the puppet master behind this grand charade. Speculations linger that she doesn't want Harry to return to the UK, despite the Duke's reported loneliness and yearning for British traditions. Is Meghan the driving force behind their continued estrangement from the royal family, or is this just another facet of their carefully curated public image? In the midst of this turmoil, King Charles III took center stage with his Christmas Day message, and oh, what a message it was. The 75-year-old monarch, in a not-so-subtle move, appeared to be teaching a lesson to his wayward son, Prince Harry. His speech, broadcast on BBC One, lavished praise on the beloved royals, highlighting the charitable endeavors of Prince William, Princess Kate, and their three children. What struck a nerve was the conspicuous absence of any mention of Harry, Meghan, or their children in King Charles's festive address. It seems that the wounds from their exit in 2023, coupled with the fire reignited by Omid Scobie's explosive book, have left the royal family unwilling to acknowledge their presence. This isn't the first time the Sussexes have been excluded from royal festivities. Last year, they were notably absent from the King's speech, marking his first Christmas without Queen Elizabeth II. As the rest of the royal clan gathered at Sandringham, Meghan and Harry spent Christmas at their Montecito home, a tradition they've maintained since 2018. So, as we wrap up this shocking revelation, it's clear that Meghan and Harry's attempt at reconciliation has hit a brick wall. The question remains, is this a consequence of their unrelenting attacks on the royal family, or is it a strategic move orchestrated by Meghan herself? So what do you think about this news, guys? Thank you for tuning in to today's discussion. As always, I encourage you to share your thoughts in the comments section below. Stay tuned for more updates on the intriguing world of royalty. Until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you again with some more fascinating news about the royal family. Thank you.